I'm going to be turning to Genesis chapter 9. And while you're turning there, you know what, church? You guys are so amazing. Thank you so much for making yesterday. Not only was it a success, but it was a lot of fun. And I was so bummed to have to miss out on that. That picture was wonderful. Brother Joe, thank you. you youth team, thank you. Our sandwich makers, thank you. <laughs> Everybody involved, thank you. Amen, amen. Interesting story here. It's often, I believe, avoided because alcohol is mentioned. <laughs> amen. So let me put on the outside, I'm not condoning drinking. It'll make a fool out of you like it did the character in here. Hello. <laughs> And Noah began to be a husbandman and planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunk. And I understand back then when you were going through stuff, you didn't have NyQuil. And all my NyQuil people said amen. amen. Benadryl or what it is, whatever your secret sauce is. Everybody, everybody coming out of the woodwork with... He didn't say mine yet. Well, tell us what it is. No. <laughs> ah, Jesus. And he drank the wine. Tanya, Cassie, no, we're not. Just We're just being us for a minute. He drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, notice there's, a, there's an association there that we need to understand saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. So he went outside and told the story. He didn't get the response expected. I hope if someone gossips to you or you gossip that you don't get the response. That's true. You need to check yourself if someone feels okay telling you the dirt on a church or a pastor or a saint. Go ahead and apply that. And Sham and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's Nakedness. That had to be awkward. Yeah. Trying to walk like that and, and, and do something like that. Sin causes a lot of problems. Amen. I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. They probably look kind of ridiculous. The wonderful thing you'll hear about a little bit later in, in, in the story. Wasn't a whole lot of people to see him, but nevertheless, isn't it the truth that you think you're safe when you make a mistake that I'll be okay, you know, but inevitably someone sees. Especially today. You know what, don't those YouTube videos of people's mistakes and slips and falls? Some of it, some of them ain't right. <laughs> I feel bad for folks. Ephesians 2 and 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. I want to say we walk differently. It don't make sense how we walk to people. And I don't mean just the physical walking, but how we live how we conduct ourselves, and how we do things. We're not always going to be congenial because we have a different way of walking and thinking and doing things. I want the mind of Christ and not the mind of the world. That being said, let's place our Bibles down. Let's, let's ask God to help us today. I know I need his help. Jesus, we love you. We need you. Lord, I, I'm going to need help bringing this thought across today. I believe there's... Everyone in here can use this and, and, and 
redeem some value out of this today, Lord, in their own lives, God. I pray for your help, your unction, and your anointing, God. I, I, your word is anointed, but I, God, I need that touch and that help today. Now, thank you so much for everything you've already done in this service, God, and we trust you, yes. God, to, to continue and finish that work today and that someone today is going to leave here different than when they came. They're going to leave here closer to you than when they got. Someone's going to leave here full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, someone's going to leave here closer in faith and believing in you like never before. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to speak on the topic of blanket coverage. It's always funny when an incident or something happens. I got to call and find out if my policy covers that. <laughs> Sadly, I've had to do that recently to find out. God's been good to me. But when it comes to insurance policies, there's a term you use that, that they use called blanket coverage, and it's, it's when everything is covered by your policy, all of the buildings and the property in them is covered. Now, I'm not going to take a long time on that. I, I try to be very clear. If I'm not, I apologize. See me after church, I'll straighten it out. But when it comes to living for God, when you obey the plan of salvation and you follow Acts 2, 238 to the T and all the scriptures in the Bible, see, because the Bible says if you believe, you're saved, and that's a, that's a quick quote, but you understand, but when you believe something, you obey something, you follow through with the plan of that thing that's being discussed. So when you're all in, God has you covered. Because God wants you covered. So God made a way for each and every one to be covered. He's made a way. He would that none should perish, but that all should come to, you know, Acts 2.38 starts with repentance. So that's the beginning of the plan. Anybody ever had any embarrassing moments? You know, Wow. There's actually a, some terms for this. I was surprised that there's different terms for different variations of embarrassment or anxiety or, you know, I've had some embarrassing moments before, but social phobia is what they, they, they label some of them. People that are really just sideways when it comes to everyday interactions and they can't handle basic anybody ever had to sweat out a job interview that 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 feeling of do i wear this you, you change your clothes five times you check, it's everything you know self-consciousness and it, yeah. you, it, yeah. fear of being scrutinized judged negative whatever there, there's a term called cataglephobia Fear of ridicule. I'll be honest with you. I have to come and stand on this pulpit weekly, multiple times. I have a fear of tripping and falling on these steps. And there's been a few times I got close. There's a few times I have no reason, nothing around me to trip at all. I almost fall down. That, that I've had nightmares, and I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know how it could happen if all of a sudden I wake up, I'm behind a pulpit with just my underwear on. Anybody that right after you show up to work? At, you know, maybe you're okay, but, I, you know, that's, that's something for the house. That's not for the house of God. You know, I've, I've had nightmares. Showing up late for church, I come, oh. There are some moments like you're having a conversation, you make a statement about someone you didn't realize are standing over your shoulder. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You ever text somebody something that was meant for somebody else? <laughs> I was listening to somebody the other day talking about a preacher that showed up and he grabbed his, his shoes out of a closet. It was kind of dark and he had two different colored shoes on when he got to church. Anybody ever done that? <laughs> Brother Joe, you wear so many colors, we probably wouldn't notice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you that 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 you know you, you come walking out of the bathroom, you check your look, and next thing you know you got someone taps you on the shoulder, and you got some toilet paper stuck to the back of your shoe. 
I remember sitting in church service as a, as a new convert, and I, I was mortified for her. I wa watched the lady walk by, and she still had toilet paper stuck in her, her skirt coming out. I was like, oh, God. I was embarrassed for her, but I didn't want to embarrass her more by saying I noticed. So I just, you know, and then that poor soul's walking around church, and no one wants to tell you. I don't want to be that guy. You know, I'm like, hey, if I got something, tell me. Embarrass me before everybody sees. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Life is full of embarrassing moments. <laughs> Who can forget the Miss America pageant sometime back when Steve Harvey announced the wrong, wrong winner? What a, what, a, what a debacle, you know? There's some weird phobias that I, that I, that I wrote down. Diaponophobia? Fear of dinner parties. I'm not afraid. Invite me. <laughs> Invite me. I got that one. Metrophobia? That don't mean what you think it means. It's a fear of poetry. Here, here, here's one. Pantherophobia. I don't have this one. Fear of your mother-in-law. <laughs> I don't know who would have this omphalophobia. It's fear of your navel. Some of you probably need to mix in some soap. Maybe you'd be afraid of yours. I don't know. And then most, most people today, especially if you're, you know, under 20 or in your teenage years, it's nomophobia. Fear of losing mobile phone service. <laughs> Everybody checking their phone right now. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> they got that was probably one for leaving your phone somewhere. Most men have that wallet phobia, leaving that somewhere. Yeah. So when we look at the story that we read, our scripture captures an embarrassing moment. It's and it's all made worse because it happens to man, a great man in scripture. There's no denying. Not only was he man, a man's man, but he was a faithful man. He was a strong man. He, he was a builder. He was, he was you, Brother Terry. He was a guy that could build and can work and strong. And Come on, ladies. You like it? What do you mean you can't hang that picture, honey? What, 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 you can't, what do you mean you can't fix the door? Everybody wants to have a handyman. Well, we, Noah, man, he built an ark. The dude could do some stuff. He did it without cordless drills, <laughs> power saws, a truck and truck. <laughs> the dude was bad. Come on. Look, I, I'm sorry. If I don't have all the tools, honey, that's got to wait. There's a lot of stuff in my house waiting, and I got all them dumb tools. <laughs> <laughs> God used Noah to literally save mankind. He was the one man on earth who found grace in the eyes of God. What a, what a man. What a guy. He obeyed God at an extreme personal cost. Now, see, see that's, that's an under, oh, there's too many. We, we let that one slip by. A good solid man's a man that'll sacrifice for right. It's easy to find a man that'll stay silent and won't step in, but thank God for a man that'll step up. Noah was such a man. He built an ark. He involved his three sons. Everyone knows the story of Noah's ark. But most people don't know this story, this embarrassing moment. The end of his story. Noah this righteous man made a mistake. He over drank, got drunk, passed out naked in his tent. <laughs> Drinking will do that to you. Before I found myself in the house of God, I hate to break it to you. I had some of my friends just, just leave me on the front lawn. Some of y'all don't understand that. I can't tell you how many times. I was a worshiper before I got in church. Oh, yeah. That porcelain God in that little room in your house? 
I spent many nights just worshiping that thing and offering up sacrifices for hours. I swore that, you know what? No, I'm not doing this again. And then that next Friday night come around, and someone invite me over or something going on. And I have a garbage bag size bag full of popcorn, couple of forties and we're throwing down. And next thing I know, <laughs> I'm clutching the horns of that altar and I'm worshiping that porcelain God with all my life. Save me. And I'm repenting and I'll never do it again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I remember being so foolish as to drive from Sacramento. I think it was to Roseville. I can't even tell you how to get there. Me and some buddies in my car racing some girls in their Volvo, the blue Volvo. Don't I? I remember that. But you think about this. Here's this great man. He's one of the last people on earth. If there ever was a time to make a mistake, okay, no one around. Cool. Let's make it now. No YouTube. No Facebook, no iPhones, no Instagram, no TikTok. Nothing to capture this man's stupid moment. Anybody got stupid moments? They weren't, they, they, he didn't even have to worry about neighbors. You ever go out and do something dumb in your yard and look around and see if your neighbors something? <laughs> but you know, Murphy's Law is timeless. Almost with the Lord of Lords. <laughs> if you have an embarrassing moment, I don't know how, even if you're one of the only people on earth, someone saw it. You see, you ever come walking into the church here and trip or have something happen, you get anything nobody saw, and then a few minutes later, Erica's notorious for this. She busts me all the time. She'll walk up. Nice save. <laughs> <laughs> the other day she sends a picture of me and I'm sitting in the in the in the foyer doing I got a phobia. You know I gotta live right. <laughs> I got cameras everywhere I live. I got a girl running around. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like the law of the universe. If you've got an embarrassing moment, someone's going to see it. And sadly, with only a few people on the planet, this is what happened to Noah. He thought he was in the privacy of his own tent. And I wonder if he thought, you know what? I'm the last of eight people on earth. And maybe he was uh, self-medicating. I don't know. I, I just survived a flood. I mean... There might be some anxiety in that. I, I'm not, not sure, you know, you're hanging out in a boat with lions, tigers, and bears, and all that, you know. Who knows? I, he didn't have the Benadryl, didn't have the NyQuil. He just had to have that grape juice. It's fermented, and, and maybe he realized, ooh, I've had a little too much. I'm going to go lay down. I'm going to go sleep it off. Nobody will ever know. But Noah was wrong. One of Noah's three sons found him drunk. First, I wonder what the Joker was doing over there. He's passed out, and sadly, Brother Lawrence, drink will do it to you. He finds himself naked. You're going to find out the more you party. Well, the clothes just seem to come off when you get out in the world. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. That's what alcohol does to you. It likes to make a fool out of you. Still does it. But understand, in that moment, there were several things that his son Ham could have done differently. He could have discreetly picked up a blanket and covered his father and slipped out of the tent and nobody would have ever known anything. He could have kept the whole incident from ever being in the word of God. He and not, just not said a word. He could have just took care of it. But he didn't. Proverbs 17 and 9 says, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. But he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. So instead, Ham immediately ran out. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, go check out Pops. You ought to go see what I saw. Yeah, you won't believe what Dad's doing over there. So he immediately started telling. 
about his dad's embarrassing moment. He used no discretion. There was no kindness, no prudence, no concern, and definitely no honor towards his own father. If that was to happen today, he's the guy that would have quickly uploaded that video for everyone to see. Check out Noah, Mr. Boat Builder. And so when he went out and broadcasted that, and he went to Shem and Japheth, when they heard it, they handled this situation, Sister Peaches, completely different. They didn't make jokes. They didn't go laugh at their dad. They didn't write their dad off and say, I'm just going to go someplace else. I can't honor him. But they refused to take part in Ham's basking in Noah's nightmare, in that shame that giving the benefit of the doubt may, may I, I doubt he intended to ever embarrass himself. Do we ever really want to? No, no I, don't, I don't believe he did. But it's a shame that your own family will want to benefit or take advantage of your mistake. The Bible says that they got a blanket and they walked into the tent backwards so that they wouldn't even see their father in that position. That's reverence. Thank God for people that can still revere one another. They covered him up and they covered up that embarrassing moment and they gave him blanket coverage. When Noah woke up, he had to ask, so the story had to get told. Oh, man, someone covered me up. Thank you. Who, who? It's not like you had to find a lot of people to ask who did it. It was the family story. And so when he learned what happened, the Bible says he blessed Shem and Japheth for their kindness, but he cursed Ham for what he'd done. Look, there's, no, there's nothing good about rejoicing in other folks' shame. We're not here. We, we don't glorify sin here. We want to see it defeated here. Well, we're not here to go, oh, look what they came out of. No, look where they're going. We live in a world today that likes to, likes to promote and revel and, 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 and show people shame and failure. We live in a world that loves a good mistake or a good failure. It likes to see the worst. It's front page news. It's the next YouTube upload. We live in a world that likes a good hypocrite story. There are folks like Ham whose ears perk up at every juicy story. They want to know every little thing. And it's sad that the same person that they're embarrassing had done some amazingly good things. Done so many good things. But nobody noticed that. Nobody's talking about that. But if that person falls into some failure, that story is told and retold and broadcasted and shared. And as Christians know all too well about this weakness in human nature. A person can live righteous and upstanding for years, decades, but let them fall once. And that reputation that was carefully built for decades can be destroyed with one poor decision. Listen, don't mix up what I'm talking about here. I'm not condoning sin. I'm not handing out a free pass to mess up, make mistake, or act the fool. Once is a mistake. Twice is a choice. Three times, it's who you are. Second Corinthians says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. This is not condemning. This is inviting. And will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters. God is seeking a, a, a brilliant, beautiful father-children relationship where you honor father, and father takes care of his babies. But something's happened in our woke culture today. Something's happened in this virtue signaling environment that we have. People try to prove themselves more virtuous by trying to show a flaw or hypocrisy in your life. Hey, I'm you, the church has suffered a long time with it. Oh, you go to church? Well, what's that doing in your life? Here's what I've always said. Wait a minute. If you recognize that's wrong, why, are you, why aren't you here doing right? 
Where are you at? If you know Christians are supposed to be that way and it's better, what are you at? So you just stand back and spectator and point and post videos and, and shame people. Hey, where, where are you at? Are you hearing me? I've seen it. I've been around. I, I've watched children attempt to shame their parents for not always lining up with certain cultural norms. Read about an 18-year-old girl who turned their mom in for attending the January 6th rally in Washington, D.C. She was wanting to virtue signal to all her young millennial friends. And look what my mom did. Mm -hmm. She got her 15 minutes of fame, but it, the cost of a relationship with her family. Wasn't too long ago, Kirk Franklin... I could sing some more, but I won't. He got an argument with his son. He's an older, he's an adult son, not a kid's son. Things got heated. I can imagine as this man, as a parent, you, you, kids, you, young people just don't understand how much is put into a child. But, you know, they're not aware enough to know when you're changing diapers and you're up hours and you're working hours and you're providing and you go without because you have a lot of people but you go without that life to give them yeah and this ignoramus huh. was upset because him and his dad got an argument and he recorded his dad in the argument and Kirk lost his school I know ain't no one here ever done that <laughs> Uh, just just right now, who's a who's your cool with that kid right, right here? Oh, that sweet little bundle of poop and eat and joy. <laughs> Wake up at five years old and tell you no. What? Yeah. Get that behind the back of the jack. <laughs> you gonna sit down and eat that macaroni and cheese? Long and caught my eye. <laughs> Isn't that just how they are? And so this joker posted it. He recorded his dad, and yeah, this man who's written some great songs, the dude's had me bumping and grooving. There's some songs that he has that I, I it's depending on my the Sunday service, I'll put his stuff on. Yes. Because yeah. it pines me up. Yeah. He made a mistake, Sister Crystal. Yeah. He blew it. The boy had never posted anything. Oh, look how wonderful my dad. He bought me this car. He sent me this house. He's taking me. He's None of that. Look at my dad blowing it. So that revenge, secretly recording the ar argument with his father using colorful language, released it to the world to show everyone how this highly respected and award winning gospel artist was a hypocrite. No, we take it. Trump. And wanted to tell the world. Listen, the Bible doesn't condone Rose's failure. I'm not condoning Kirk Franklin's failure. I'm not saying, hey, go home, dads, lose your cool, cut your kids out. Go home out. I'm not condoning, the Bible's not condoning anyone's sin. Listen, sin is destructive. Don't go get yourself. Don't, 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 don't play with it. But the consequences of sin are not just confined to the guilty. Hear me now. It wounds the innocent. The spouses, the children, the church, those who care. Sin confuses righteous judgment. Sin divides. It destroys more than the guilty imagine, and it steals more than its victims can afford. God has given an assignment of mercy and healing to the church. Yes. But it should never become an excuse for justifying sin or unrepentant sinners. Be careful when you buddy and pal up with someone who's wrong. Be careful when we live in an environment today where there's a church on any corner and you can act wrong, speak wrong, do wrong, and you go off and you try a private message and suddenly text and act like, you're good at there's so wait a minute. If you're so good, come help us be good. That's right. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Come on, preach it. The 
by the time you find that perfect church and you show up, I guess it's not perfect anymore. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 17, for the time is coming that judgment must begin. The house of God, this is I think the third time I've used this verse in so many weeks. And then it first began to ask, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? These stories do not prove that these people were permanently, morally bankrupt hypocrites. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall. You're going to blow it. You're going to lose your fool. What it proves is that they're human. It proves that my God, I'm glad you went to Calvary. I got some mistakes that you covered up. They failed. They had issues. They failed. They had mistakes. Big ones. Just like everybody else. So unless your name is Jesus, you can walk on water. Even the best, most upright people among us. Yes. We're going to make mistakes oh. and need blanket coverage. Yes, amen. The matter is not if we're going to fall. Right. We're all going to fall. Yes. We all make mistakes. Yes. Scripture is clear that we all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. Scripture is clear that there is none righteous, no, not one. Micah 7 and 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, when I fall. Amen. Put on that hat. Walk around and make you think that you just had it perfect all week long. That's okay. I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Did you notice the wording? When I fall, not if I fall. We're all going to fall at times. We're all going to. You, 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 you may have blown it this week. You, you may have blown it last night. You may have blown it. It doesn't matter. The question is not whether we're going to fall down. The question is, are you going to get up? Are you going to go again? Are you going to try to get it right? If we fall, we got an altar. If we mess up, we got a repentance. If we make a new mistake, we have the cross of Jesus to cling to. If we fall, we have a gracious God who shed his blood for us. If we fall, Jesus already paid the penalty for that failure. He already purchased our forgiveness if we repent. All we need to do it is bring that failure to him in repentance. Yeah. And he'll take it from us. Yes. Let me help you. Just because you've been around church for a long time doesn't mean you don't need to repent. True. That's true. Come on, preach it. If you sit back with a stoic attitude, I'm going to be honest with you. If, if you don't ever come up and lay your head down in these altars and really just repent for maybe being just arrogant. Come on. Right. Maybe the pride of life, yeah. lust of the flesh, lust of whatever it is. Maybe just because you think you, you're so great. Come on. All have sinned. Yes. Maybe if, if you sit across the room and see what somebody else needs to do, yeah. maybe you need to repent because you, you don't yeah. see what you need to do. True. Right. It's good. Come on. Amen. But the question is not whether we're going to fall or fail. But the question I want to deal with today is what will we do? Listen to me. When somebody else fails and make a mistake. What are we going to do when a loved one falls in front of us? When a brother fails in front of us or a sister fails in front of us? Are you going to be a ham? I want to go tell everybody through text messages, through Facebook messages, little whisper here, little whisper there. So we, we, I will sign the book club and call this a shame so that everyone you know can revel in their failure. Well, we feel better because we're standing where they fell. <coughs> or is there anybody here today who wants to be like Shem and Japheth? I understand. Shem and Japheth had the same family. Same race and same situation as Ham. But they chose a different path of kindness. Amen. They Amen. chose the path of discretion. Amen. And not only that, but they did not. They did not even want to see their dad. And that they, they, they said, oh, we're not doing it that way. Yeah. And the Bible says they grabbed a blanket. Yeah, yeah. They grabbed a blanket and walked backwards. And they covered him up. They covered their father. They wanted to restore honor. They, they wanted to restore dignity to their father. They didn't want to point out the differences in the way they thought. They didn't want the whole world to see. I don't agree with him. I don't go over there. They didn't want to 
comparison. They didn't want to ridicule it. They didn't want to broadcast. That's what love does. Love sometimes walks a little backwards. Sometimes love carries an extra garment. Sometimes love doesn't want to look. Sometimes love wants to restore and not level. Sometimes love is finding someone. I don't care what it costs me. I want to give my love also. I want to cover up that mess. I don't want to see. Oh, I love bigger than I hate. I love bigger than that situation. Problems tend to fall because hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. First Peter 4 and 8, and above all things have fervent charity or love among yourselves, for love shall cover a multitude of sins. Love covers. Amen. Loving someone Amen. does not condone sin, but love does want to cover it. It's yeah. not an excuse or one of more sin, but love does not revel in the shame of it. It doesn't publish sin. Love doesn't celebrate in somebody's failure. It was a shameful thing that Noah had done. Someone that had risen to such heights in the eyes of God to be given such an important task. He messed up. He embarrassed himself. And his sons, Shem and Japheth, walked a little different, walked backwards, and placed an garment over their father. No, oh, he was safe. But those wonderful they didn't want to remember that. They didn't want that memory in their mind. One of the smartest things I was ever told was my mother, by my mother when my father had been in an accident. She said, I don't want you to go in there and see your father like that. I want you to remember how he was. Yes. I don't wonder what happens to some of us instead of looking at the faults of some of us. I don't know, I don't know what they can be. I don't remember what they were about. I'll tell you what, maybe if I could give them a mop, maybe if I would be with the chance to come back, give them a chance to rise up, give them a chance to be who they can be. They refuse to look at them. They took the heart of it. And they walked differently than everybody else and protested their heart. Let me tell you something. This is important. This affects family. Yes. This concept affects church. Yes. And affects people's relationship with God. You know, family is the closest, most intimate relationship we have. Yes, right. We see each other in the worst awful oh, yes, way. <laughs> I don't look like this when I call out of bed in the morning. In fact, it, it's normal for Eric to want to get a picture of me when, when on my head. I ain't got much hair, but boy, I'm, I'm doing some work on that thing in the middle. I can get up, I look absolutely ridiculous. Give her five minutes, she'd probably put about 20 photos of this crazy looking head. It's, 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 it's embarrassing. It's a, it's a joke around my house. We, we see each other in our pajamas, but we don't do that. Do we, you know what? Anybody come in our pajamas this morning? Uh, you see, all is different. We don't see each other with our squinty eyes trying to grow up and have a cup of coffee so you can get a little wake up and go. You know what I'm saying? We put on our best face and our nice clothes when we come to church. At church, it's easy to be patient. It's easy to be kind. It's easy to have that concentrated holiness. This is what I say. I got to know. Eric is great. Back is hey. Put the front claws out. Shoot, I can play it all that long. Judge and I were up almost all night, and he he, he thinks it's play time if I'm awake. I'm trying to study, and he's bringing me his rope. So I get up and take him out and walk around. I hear it. I know I'm making that noise. I don't 
come in here like that. I'm not coming in here to bear sweats in my flip flops. Y'all see me? Look, man, dignified. That's right. That's right. Because like, let me show you how funny he's not. But she don't do that. Better not. <laughs> but understand that when you're at home, those walls come out. That doesn't make you unholy. You're home. Our families see us at home. You see, Brother Jesus and Nancy sees you. Brother Jonathan, that's who they miss. He sees you with your nation. <laughs> Bro, you hear what I'm saying? That person that you see is you when you're grumpy. Sees you when you got up on the wrong side of the head and they say, you know what, you can stay away from me too. Yeah. Now, now our young people aren't in here, but some of these will let them know, hey, you know what, parents aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. Come on. Parents, we just have a way of annoying our children. <laughs> but they don't understand that we're not. We make mistakes. And here they are. They've been alive for five minutes and they think they want to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> The sad thing is, the question really is, is will, will they be a ham and embarrass? Or are they going to be honorable like Shem and Jacob? Recognize that, you know, we're just human. I'm not talking about abusive situations. If someone's being hurt, something needs to change. I'm talking about normal human slip-ups. Mom and dad get upset. Mom gets mad. Dad gets sad. Dad has to go to the Andes for a few hours. You know? Yeah, y'all will be on the spot. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate my honest brother over here. He didn't go to the end. Maybe I don't know. I don't know who's over here. Yeah. If I get that, I just come to the church. This is where I go. See, y'all got keys, but you don't know what they're for. They're for that one right there. Yes, they are. That's right. Yes, they are. Don't help me stay safe. Come on. Don't help me stay safe. You really think I see you as you are? I know. Oh, see? That, that beautiful lady I'm married to? Oh, no, no, she's a school teacher. Show her brother. brother. Oh, she. Mm. She, she keeps going to that classroom. Yeah. Well, you think she's going to let the house slip? Oh. I got in trouble yesterday. Brother Davenport knows about that one. <laughs> we fail. We make mistakes. Stuff happens in our homes. But let me tell you something. We don't want to make one another butt of jokes. We don't want to embarrass one another. There needs to be some blanket coverage in us. There needs to be some blanket coverage where we love and honor. I am going to make mistakes. Let me talk about what you're good at. Let me talk about it. Let me talk about those things. Don't tell everybody about a dumb, stupid mistake that made last week or last night. No, you, you, you don't look bigger when you make so much smaller. You definitely don't get right on somebody else's camera. Love covers sin. Home needs to be a safe place where we help each other. Uh, yeah. and me. That's where we teach. Learn to live God. Not here. Because you put it all here. But you need to have it happen there. You can't, if you have the one way at home and a different way here, it's always going to be a problem. You need to create the environment that you feel here to where it's conducive there. You can't be playing all that. Junkie music, music having a TV, TV on 24 hours a day, have kids running around and all sorts of it, and think the holy angels of God are going to be hanging out in there. Home should be as Christ centered as the church if it's going to be a good environment. Amen. We've got to encourage one another to hold in our home. Yes. Right. Yeah. That situation happened with the other day. Mom will tell on us. I made a mistake, my sister broke. I put. I mean, you know, I'm big judges, big old, I don't want to tell them all this. I'm telling them myself. What? Amen. what are you doing? <laughs> he's got that great big old bowl with food in it, and he's giving me a hard time, so I put the food on top of his kennel. Now, I taught him, and we don't tell him to get the thing. Go to your room. 
It just transfers from kids and dogs. It just all works. Right. Oh, you, that's it. Girl. You're working at your own place. Go in there. The house is mine. Your room's mine. But you just need to be that song. So I told that joker, you know, he's about, I don't know, about eight pounds. I'm hanging out now. Get her up. But he could tell. My tone went up a little bit. Yeah. He was flying and we were flying and the whole kettle went flying and the food went flying. Yeah. I was hot and went eat. I just busted out and went, you idiot. Yeah, he's been getting me all, man. I just picked that kettle and just ah. Food all over the floor. I just brought my bunch of groceries in. And my sweet loving wife runs over the dustpan to pick the food. I said, no! Where are you? I'll be in trouble for this mess. Okay. Hopefully we should cover this later. But anyway. So was a mess. Someone tell him. Cover his sin, sister. So anyway, I said, what are you doing? Leave that alone. And I'm already hot. And she looks at me. I just clean up. I said, I just want groceries in. Put those away. I got that. Let me get my act together. Don't come in and argue with me about what needs to be done. I got that. Because, yes, I got two dogs. Both of them. One of them 90 or 100 pounds, the other one about 60. No human needs to pick that food up. Oh, yeah. Just, I got fridge for it. Let's get this stuff in the fridge. Get for I get. I just went to the grocery store for you, baby. Oh. You have to go. I don't need you to do that. Don't, and, and, and you know what you do? Shh. Nobody ever calms down when you tell them to calm down. I said, they, 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 they'll tell you to calm down. I don't want to calm down right now. I want to skin that dog and make slippers. Just go do that. And just go, I don't want to talk about it. I know. And I said, and so we talked about that. I said, honey, I love you. I do. It's a simple conversation. I'm telling them, listen, when I get to that point, I don't need you to be the person coming and telling me, that ain't work. <laughs> the head bob? Oh, no. Pour gasoline on the fire. I'm fixing it. Look, no, no, no. You, you come in, you, you need, need to be, be my sweetheart baby doll that comes and sues and calms me down. You need to be on my side. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Be on my side. It's a dumb, stupid thing that happened. Let the dumb, stupid idiot that caused it figure it out. Get, don't come in and I'm already on the other side of Sandy. <laughs> it's probably not a good time to come in and tell me to calm down. Yeah. Just take care of them groceries. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Y'all, did, did anybody get told that story that I, I got, I blew up over the door? Did my wife come telling any of you all? Uh, she covered me. Yes. I told you because let you know. Listen, y'all gonna have episodes. I'll never forget, and I don't mean to tell on you, but I'm telling on you. This sweet lady right here, back when we were in a church, this little trailer. She was, I don't know if you remember this, it scared me. Oh boy. Sister Davenport was talking too loud. Brother Davenport was trying to say something. And out of nowhere. He turned around and made a statement. I, I tell you right now, that's his doll right there. I've been around. She climbed right up. He finished what he was saying. Yeah. Well, you, you don't, don't get, get to that point without having a few moments in life where oh. you have to figure out how you all can handle that moment. That's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Wow. We all have those. Whether the oldest, the youngest, whatever. My thing is, is it's got to be a love. Blanket coverage needs to be in the church, needs to be in the home, needs to be in our relationship. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to make a fool out of them. We're all going to slip. We're all going to fall. You're going to look at something dumb. But thank God for people that love you. I cover you, brother. I got your back. You got God that covers us, loves us. Hey, we need that church that got you. It's a sad day. That in the church we judge one another like that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Come on, Pastor, preach that. 
Cri criticize sister souls or brothers criticize the pastor criticize the church we we walk by they should do this they should do that as much as we love to talk about the love of god we need to talk about his amazing grace and his mercy yes. Yes. if we talk about all that other junk we need to talk about the good stuff more yes. we can't expect only to receive mercy towards us we need to show mercy some people think criticism is a gift of the spirit can I walk down this road? They operate in that gift. They criticize the music. They criticize the sound. They criticize the volume. They criticize the temperature. They criticize sister so-and-so and what she's wearing. They criticize brother so-and-so and what he said behind the pulpit. They criticize the lack of ministry or that ministry. And they sit on their high hands instead of offering any help. And then after they create another one of the Father, well, we're going someplace else. Come on. And they never lifted a finger. They acted like it, but they never did. They criticized the children are too loud. Until it's their child. They criticized the long altar services until it's their friend or visitor praying. Can, can we love? Yes. Can we show grace? Can, can we show mercy? You know, no, no. They, they, they can't criticize. They think every service is going to run perfectly the way you want. Amen. That's right. Come on. Preach it, Pastor. Amen. Come on. Amen. Your bathroom out at the house hasn't been cleaned spotless in a month. <laughs> but one misplaced, yes. misplaced paper towel in the bathroom. What's this church doing around here? Give me that cleaning mess. I'll straighten all these people out. You're back and sitting in the closet, ain't been out since Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Come on, Pastor. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Show up once a week to complain. How come nobody didn't greet me at the door today? How come we don't have this children class or that? Class? There's not enough youth events around here. What, what, what about the, the marriage? What about what? I'll tell you what. Show up more. Head up at the port department. Sign up to help. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here's what I really think. How can you use that person, Pastor? <laughs> Don't you know what they did? Right. Do you see what they're wearing? No. Do you know what they said about you, Pastor? I kind of take my mom Ali's approach on that. I'm sorry, I'm old. At least you're talking about me. True. Yeah. Good or bad. Right. They don't talk. talk. Yeah, they right, yeah, it's right. How can you use that? You know what? You know, know what they, they were doing? doing? Well, I, I don't know what they said or what they're doing, but I mean, I'll see, see what you're doing and hear what you're saying. Yeah. And you're criticizing everyone. Yeah. And not even criticizing me for allowing them to be used. Yeah. All the while, I watch you sitting back in your seat. Judging people instead amen. of worshiping. That's it. Amen. Right. Amen. Come on. That's right. It's true. It's true. Let's preach. Come on. Listen. As a pastor of this church, we, we believe in holiness. Yes, yes we do. We, we, we believe in pursuing God. We, yes. we believe in a distinction of genders. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm thankful for that new Supreme Court nominee. Yeah, amen. She admitted. Yeah. I can't, I can't tell the gender of anybody. You need a biologist. Yes. Biology tells you if you're a boy or a girl. Thank yeah. you from restoring That's the fact true. that it's not a choice, it's biology. Thank you. Thank you. We still believe in modesty around here, inside and out. Now, let me go down this road. My wife and I are not perfect. Go ahead and stand up if you are. Because we don't expect you to be perfect either. Right. Come on. But, but I do want you to know yeah. what we will even teach. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Go ahead, listen. Amen. Look at us, watch us. Yes. See yes. the imperfections. imperfections. Yes. But don't, don't miss that. Don't, don't, don't miss the effort to work. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Come on, come on, Pastor. Amen. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't, don't miss, miss everything else. Yes. Go yes. ahead. Watch well, me lose my temper over spill. Dog old. No, 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 it's not a little feepy dog. I thank God 
I wasn't feeding him raw meat in that meal. Oh. Yes. He's on that semi-raw dog food diet, whatever, raw, raw food diet. Listen. Saying all that, we're, we're not perfect. We're striving to be. Yeah, that's right. Amen. If you're looking for perfection, we're going to disappoint you. Yes. 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 I, don't, I, I don't want you staring directly at me. I want you looking unto Jesus. Yes. 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 Follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. If we fail, if we're not all you expect us to be, and you choose to stop worshiping with us, Oh, that's fine, but don't stop following Christ. That's right. But don't go away criticizing, complaining, and trying to point out flaws to justify the fact that you weren't all in to begin with. That's right. Yeah. Careful who you're friends with. Yes. Careful who you join yourself to. A harlot. Yeah. Because a harlot's always shopping. Yes. And you can't say shopping without saying hopping. True. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't believe me? Hey, ladies, you better stay low with that man. Hey, sir, you better stay low. Ain't no shopping, ain't no hopping. We're married. That's it. That's right. Go and join yourself to the hopping, shopping people. I'm looking for the saints of God. Oh, praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? You don't often see a great Christian ever leave the church unless they're moving out of town or moving in the ministry. This is church preaches and teaches forgiveness. Yes. Amen. You. Amen. This church, church teaches, teaches love and mercy. mercy. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, it Are you does. hearing me? Yes. Amen. Pride is an abomination to God. Yes, it is. We teach that gossiping and slander and backbiting is wrong. Yes. 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 Amen. If you face me coming, face me leaving. True. Yes. Yes. Right. Come on. Oh, yeah. Preach it. Hear it. Hear it. Hear it. Hear it. I'm going to get in the nitty gritty here because I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. We're not doing church no. like God wants. Right. You just can't come and go with your mind. If you, well, we're not in gangs. No, but he said, pick a side. Listen, if you you can't come one way and leave another, that's right. you'll make it at the gang. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Because, because if you have all the love and the mercy you claim, why'd you leave? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. The Pharisees looked the part, but they didn't act the part. And Jesus rebuked them. You know what a Pharisee is? They, off, they always criticize, but they never do. Right. I got a suggestion for you. Don't be a Pharisee. I made up my mind years ago. I will treat your children as I want my children to be treated. Yes. In fact, at all, honestly, my children are able to tell you, you know, Dad, you actually treat those kids a lot better than I did. Because I have a higher expectation on my own children. Amen. I'm going to say something blow your mind. But you better hear me on this. There's not going to be one person on this platform, including me, that is not served at one point that he sat down. Yeah, that's right. It's a privilege to be up here. Yes, it is. Not right. Right. Yes, it is. We have rarely ever resorted to sitting anyone down because I've learned that love covers all to do. Listen, why is he got all this? Listen, because this this blanket coverage should seep and move into every area of our yes. at work, at home, at yes. church, yes. at the school, wherever you're at. I, I promise. I. I, I as a pastor, I pass you better walking backwards with a garment. Come on, get that. I want to walk backwards with a garment in your life. I want you to walk backwards with a garment. I think we need to walk backwards with a garment in everybody's life. Yes. 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 Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. What does the Bible say? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. Self, lest thou be also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, yes. and so fulfill the law of Christ. I know people were storing business. Mm -hmm. I'm walking around and handing out garments and blankets to cover one another, to help one another, to pick up one another. You don't go in the faith, the, 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 the towel, and you don't go and hang out in the bath water. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. 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 Is it still amazing grace? Yeah. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Yeah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Can you forgive me today? 
for carrying a garment for somebody? Can you forgive me today that I may not be walking like everybody else and I'm going to walk backwards to find someone that may need some covering, that may need some help as a church that we can walk in here and bear one another and love one another and that God we sang about so wonderfully can walk up and down these aisles and reach into the couple that struggled all week or a young person that's gone about or that, oh, are you hearing me? That this can be a place where God can give blanket coverage. Oh, what a church that will walk in and love, not leave, love and cover, show mercy and grace. I believe in restoration. I believe in mercy. I still believe in hope. I believe in it. I believe in God's blanket covering. I'm going to wrap this up. When King Saul failed, God, time after time, he finally caught up with him. And understand, God won't always strive with you, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to be the last one to draw the line. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to be more happy to work with someone that maybe God's given up. I don't ever really want to give up on anybody. Come on, Pastor. Me either. Come on, Pastor. You yourself out of my head. That's fine. Come on. Come on. That's but right. I, I don't throw anybody away. No. That's it. No. No one. Come on. The soul was killed on the battlefield. Yes. Because the Lord just withdrew his hand. David had the most to gain from Saul's death. Saul had chased him for years. David had every right to finally. Saul threatened to kill him. When Saul died, David did something. 2 Samuel 1 and 20, if you want to turn there, tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ascalon. Stop giving all the excuses as to why you did this or you did. What, 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 instead of the excuses of giving up and what about the excuse of let me stand in there and live up to the words I declared? Come on. Let me show the mercy I received. Let me give the opportunity that was handed me when I got here. Let me Sometimes we forget where we came from. And we start judging the churches on that. And we don't realize how many times we didn't live up to expectation. We didn't live up to calling. Up. And I'm like, Pastor, I didn't show up fully prepared today because I got too busy yesterday. And so I felt repentant all night. I walked in, I told the leadership, listen, guys, you got to pray for me. I, got I told them, I said, man, I, I got a thought, but I don't know if I got a message on together. So I'm not doing so good today. Preach it, Lord. Preach it, Lord. Preach it, come on, Lord. Don't publish it to others. Don't, Don't run around in the lap and want to ridicule. Yes. Jesus. Don't publish it. Come on, Pastor. Don't preach. rejoice over somebody's mistake. Come on, come on. Is there, Is there anybody in here that wants to walk around with a garment back? Let me come out. Come on, I got you. I got you. Come on, right here. You got blanket coverage here. Oh, don't look at their failure. Yes. Show some grace. Yes. Hide your eyes for a moment. Yes. If David could do it. Yes. Yep, that's right. Too many of us get on our high horses and we forget where we come from. Or leave me out of it. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to be. Right. Come on. It's good. You've, you've left a garment somewhere. Yeah. How? Right. So as I come to a close. I want to give you a powerful truth. In fact, I'm going to give you two more. That story in John 8 when the Pharisees were trying to capture Jesus in a form. Understand, we get a little distracted by the event, not realize they're really after Jesus here. This is what Pharisees do. They'll talk about their goodness, but they want to magnify anything that they think is a fault. They always try to capture other people's faults. They never want to look at theirs. It's a narcissist. They caught a woman in the very act of adultery. Can you get any other way to that guy's call? Yeah. And they dragged her into the courtyard where Jesus was. I want you to, this is another view of this thing. Just, just go with me. I believe they threw her down in front of Jesus and proclaimed her great sin. That one in the courtyard wanted. Believe me now, Jesus. 
what it says. This Jesus, Jesus is this, this situation back to her. Jesus. More than without punishing his Right, right. Make, Make no mistake, mistake judgmental people generally don't, don't care about making things, things right. right. Oh, no. That, they want to come up, throw up on the situation, and walk away and leave you with a mess. Right. They're just trying to hurt people. Yeah. Careful who you're joining yourself to. Yeah. They want to hurt a church or hurt a family or hurt a pastor's wife or hurt a pastor or hurt a child. These Pharisees could care less about the woman. They, they, they Listen, they knew who she was probably more than you realize. Come on. They wanted to hurt Jesus. Ruining her was a bonus. You need to understand this. The enemy will use people to hurt a church or hurt a Be careful, folks. Get a hold of the spirit of what I'm saying here. I've always wondered why Jesus stooped down on the right and the ground. He just had a, probably a naked woman thrown in front of him. Making an example. Look at this. Maybe. I've heard it said some, some people say that he was disrespecting men. Many people have created all sorts of theories about what he wrote in the sand. People that just wanted to get damaged. She had been dragged from the bed of sin and cast in the public. You want to talk about shame? I don't like that I heard stand here with under her arm. She, she, she didn't even have that. She knew. She, she knew why she was going to be happy about it. About it. Nobody's, Nobody's happy about, about their mess. mess. So don't ever get comfortable with your mess. mess. True. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Yeah. And when you're around somebody that gets comfortable with their, their backbiting, their gossip, oh, you better watch out because if that gets on you, oh, wow. deceive people. The scary part is they don't know they're deceived. Wow. Yes. So like this woman, Noah too was in a bad situation. Both were helpless, both vulnerable. But here's this woman lying on the ground in open shame. Now Jesus could have, I guess he could have grandstanded a little bit. He gave a sermon on mercy. He could have rebuked them. Got an argument about the law of Moses, all the law. Leaving that woman feeling the sting of shame and condemnation exposed to everybody. Like, you're all having a conversation and I'm... So I wonder the reason that was Jesus diverting his eyes. Did not want to add to her shame. And he looked down at that ground and began to write. He was not going to participate in people gawking at her. He was not going to participate in that condemnation. Could it be said that love was walking backwards there? Could it be said that they just decided to walk through that situation a little different than what they wanted because he refused to add her shame and look on her nakedness? Oh, that he who does not sin cast the first stone with those words. The sound of shame and condemnation and guilt all began to fall on all those who were acting like Ham. And Jesus was acting like Shem and Jacob. I'm covering this one too. You ain't going to embarrass this one on my wall. You may not love her, but I do. You may not care, but I do. You may not want to cover it up, but I do. Instead of condemning the sinner, he condemned the condemners. He rebuked the rebukers. He judged the self of what he judges. And he gave grace to the woman.
Amen. In this church, you need your stones at home. They don't belong here. If you feel the need to pick up stones, remember that that's a stone was probably the one Jesus did use on you. Instead of picking a stone, can we take up a garden today? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Can we pick up a garden today for somebody? I'm going to read a, a painful scripture to live. And unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. And he that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Can we walk different now? Can we leave here and walk a little different? It may look a little backwards to the world, but can we walk different? Can, can, can we walk different with a, with a garment in our hand? Can we walk different with the with the purpose of I want to help someone? Yes. I want to love someone. Yes. I want to love someone that people can pay. I want to love someone that nobody wants. Help me love the unlovable because that's what he did for me. Help me love somebody that don't belong. Help me be the one that wrap my arms around someone that's been rejected. Let's all stand. I've, I've preached this story a million times. But well, one of the first things that the father did when the father was making his way. Some of you gotta quit giving seconds. Some of you gotta you gotta get back to the understanding what a tithe first fruits. You gotta get Back to, you know, we can give him all the leftovers and give him, start giving him verse. When the prodigal showed up, I'll use my jacket, but I'm wired up here. Let me have it. Let me get somebody's jacket. Walk up here like a prodigal Christian. The dad rang. I wonder who would love to see you come running with love for someone that's just flat messed up. And the Bible says it wasn't in any old garment, it wasn't a rag, it wasn't second. The Bible says it was the best. It was the best. It was the best. It was the best. Hallelujah. I wonder what would happen if some of us would realize this church is filled with people. I want to give the best. I want to bring forth the best robe. 